The Uncertainty Principle. In 1927, Heisenberg introduced the idea of the uncertainty principle. So it says, if a measurement of the position of a particle is made with uncertainty delta x, and a simultaneous measurement of the x component of the momentum is made with uncertainty delta p x, then delta x times delta p x is greater or equal to h bar over two, where h bar is. Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. This is known as position momentum uncertainty. If we know the wavelength exactly, p is equal to h over lambda is known, and that means we have a single wavelength that extends through space, infinite uncertainty in the position. So that means it's not localized anymore, it's delocalized. If the Uh, momentum is not known, a range of wavelengths is possible, a particle is represented by a wave packet which is localized. All right, so if we look at the uh, position momentum uncertainty, the momentum it can be uh, written as h over lambda. If I multiply the top and bottom with frequency, delta hf over uh, lambda f, multiplied by delta x is greater or equal to h bar over 2. That means we have delta x times delta e, because delta hf would be delta e. And for lambda times f, we have uh, delta x divided by delta t. That means delta e times delta t is greater or equal to h bar over 2. This is known as energy time uncertainty. Okay. So uh, we have two versions, posi position momentum uncertainty, position uncertainty in position multiplied with uncertainty in the linear momentum is greater or equal to h bar over 2, and energy time uncertainty, the uncertainty in the energy and uncertainty in the measurement time uh, product is greater or equal to h bar over 2. Let's take a look at an example. Uh, the speed of an electron is measured to be 5 times 10 to 3 meters per second to an accuracy of 0.003%. Find the minimum uncertainty in determining the position of this electron. Now, uh, this is a non-relativistic uh, speed, so we can write the momentum of the electron x component as m times vx, Uh, so that the uncertainty in the linear momentum will be m times the uncertainty in the speed of the electron. So this is uh, the rest mass, 9.11 times 10 to minus 31 kilograms, multiplied with the uncertainty in the speed, 0.003% of Uh, 5 times 10 to 3. So this gives us uh, an uncertainty in the linear momentum 1.3665 times 10 to minus 31 kilograms meters per second. Now using Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, delta x times delta px is greater or equal to h bar over 2 we find that the uncertainty in the position should be greater or equal to h bar divided by 2 delta px. And that will give us, if we substitute the numbers here, uh, Planck's constant 6.626 10 to minus 34 divided by 2 pi, that's h bar, but there's another 2 here, so this becomes 4 pi. And uncertainty in the momentum, 1.3665, 10 to minus 31. So we obtain a minimum uncertainty in position as a 0.386 millimeters. All right. So we have used the position momentum uncertainty to find the minimum uncertainty in the position. 
Uh, let's take a look at another example. The line width of atomic emissions. Atoms have quantized energy levels similar to those of Planck's oscillators, although the energy levels of an atom are usually not evenly spaced. When an atom makes a transition between states separated in energy by delta E, energy is emitted in the form of a photon of frequency F equals delta E over H. Although an excited atom can radiate at any time from t equals 0 to t equals infinity, the average time interval after excitation during which an atom radiates is called the lifetime tau. If tau is 10 to minus 8 seconds, use the uncertainty principle to compute the line width delta f produced by this finite uh, lifetime. So the energy of the emitted photon will be Planck's constant times frequency f. So we will see that the delta e will correspond, correspond to h times delta f. So delta f is delta e divided by the Planck's constant h. And we also know h bar is h divided by 2 pi. Now the uncertainty in the energy delta e multiplied with the uncertainty in the time, measurement time, is greater or equal to h bar over 2. Uh, so for uncertainty in the energy, we can substitute h times delta f, and h times delta f times delta t is greater or equal to h bar over 2 or h over 4 pi. So these h's will cancel and we will find that delta f will be greater or equal to 1 over 4 pi times the lifetime tau, that's the uh, delta t, the time interval in which we make this measurement. So this would be uh, 1 over 1 over 4 pi 10 to minus 8. So delta F will be greater or equal to 8 times 10 to 6 hertz. Okay, so uh, with the idea that we have a, a particle, a quantum particle has a wave associated with it, uh, the particle is ideally fully localized, it's a single point, and a wave is totally delocalized, extends through a space, uh, Heisenberg set forth this idea of the uncertainty principle. If a measurement of the position of a particle is made with uncertainty delta x, a simultaneous measurement of the x component of corresponding component of the momentum is made with uncertainty delta px, then the product of the uncertainties is greater or equal to h bar over 2, position momentum uncertainty. And if lambda is known exactly, then that means the particle has a wave that extends through space, uh, which means uh, there's infinite uncertainty in the position, so that makes sense. If the momentum is not known, a range of wavelengths is possible, then the particle is represented by a wave packet, as we have seen in the previous video, it's somewhat localized. Another version of this position momentum uncertainty is energy time uncertainty. The uncertainty in the energy multiplied with uncertainty in the measurement time is greater or equal to h bar over 2. We have seen one example where the speed of an electron was uh, non-relativistic. So we can calculate the uncertainty in the momentum by uh, calculating the uncertainty in the speed multiplied with m and using Heisenberg's uncertainty delta x is greater or equal to h bar over 2 delta px we can get our answer and for uh, atoms with quantized energy levels the transitions will correspond to a delta e that gives us h times uh, delta f the line width uh, of the transitions and delta f is delta e over h and using energy time uncertainty knowing the lifetime of uh, the atom uh, so that's basically 
the, the average time interval after excitation during which an atom radiates, that's the measurement time of the radiation, uh, we can use the energy time uncertainty to find delta F is greater or equal to 1 over 4 pi tau.